Alright guys, so the whole world is preparing for the new America. President Biden has dropped out of the race and chances are Trump's likely gonna win. Now this comes as a shock, but not to Russia, not to China or the global south. The shock belongs to the G7 who expected the US to still run the old playbook. Now that's gonna change. This fear is causing two of the biggest US allies, Canada and the UK, to really hedge their bets and they are drifting back towards China just in case. If the US goes full protectionist, they need an alternative. It's quite shocking when you see headlines like this and from the Canadian media no less. Canada and China pledging to mend relations after their foreign ministers met in Beijing. And this was the first visit in 7 years and it was unannounced. It's important to note Wang Yi didn't expect this. Canada initiated this surprise visit. Well, it's not really a surprise if you consider the return of Trump. Looking at the Canadian statement for the visit, it's quite telling. Ottawa wants a reset of relations. It's also interesting that they highlighted the bilateral trade between both countries. Two-way merchandise trade totaled nearly $120 billion. Canadian exports to China were around $30.5 billion, 6.2% higher than in the year prior. Despite all the talk of decoupling and China being the big boogeyman, Canada's trade with Beijing is actually growing. It's all in the data. So Minister Jolly's visit to China isn't just to shake hands and take pictures with Wang Yi. It's all about securing economic trade. It's about selling more stuff to China if the new America flips on the G7. This is the big departure from the last exchange China and Canada had. During the last G20 in 2020, I believe, President Xi himself scolded Trudeau and it was captured on camera with sound. If there is sincerity in on your part, uh, free and open and frank dialogue, and that is what we will continue to have, we will uh, continue to look to work constructively together, but there will be things we will disagree on, you will have to be Let's create the conditions first. Now, I believe China's approach is very simple. They will just sit back and they'll wait until countries come to their senses. Yes, China's government, their management isn't for every country. But at the end of the day, it's simply about trade and expanding each other's economy. You mind your own affairs and I'll mind my own house. Let's just focus on business. So why is Canada hedging with China now? It's because the US is about to flip the script and ramp up all the tariffs. Trump is proposing a new 10% universal tariff on all imports into the US. So whether you are China or part of the G7, your imports will be taxed. And obviously, this will slow down trade significantly. This has all sorts of problems, especially for America's biggest trading partners. Canada exports around $35 billion worth of goods to the US. And if this drops by, say, 10%, Canadian GDP could fall and many jobs could be lost. And because there will be a shortfall of dollars coming into the country, this might mess up the Canadian currency in a crisis. Trudeau might be forced to sell US bonds in a worst case scenario. Digging deeper into the numbers, it's obvious US tariffs will hurt Canada's economy. What if Canadian oil and their commodities are subjected to this import tax? It would decimate one of their biggest industries. Canada's trade balance has gone from a surplus of $19.7 billion in 2022 to a deficit of nearly $2 billion last year. Higher trade barriers to the US could mean a higher deficit. And like all developed economies, this means borrowing money, increasing the national debt. Many people don't know this, but Canada and the US fought a mini trade war before. Trump decided to whack them with a 25% tariff on steel and 10% on aluminum, and this was back in 2018 or 2019. In retaliation, the Canadians slapped the US with their own set of import taxes. And this included US steel, US pizza, and maple syrup from America. Even boats, coffee, and paper towels were subjected to Canada's retaliation. And you can't really make this stuff up. At the end of the day, when you target a country's economy, they will wake up, even if they are a G7 ally. 
So it's understandable why Canada wants to hedge their bets with China. Trade with Beijing is heading up, while trade with the US is likely going to crash when Trump enters office. But it's important to point out certain contradictions. Even as we speak, Canada's finance minister, Freeland, is hinting at trade action against China. And once again, it revolves around China's overcapacity and EVs. Western countries, and very much the US, are putting a premium on secure supply chains and are taking a different attitude towards Chinese overcapacity. Canada is mixing foreign policy with economics, and it seems they are still fiercely married to US ideology, which is spreading to their trade decisions. Hitting China with tariffs or targeting their EVs isn't going to pan out well. Canada currently has a 6% tariff on Chinese vehicles, and that's quite manageable. But if they follow the EU and they jack things up to 30% or even 40%, I don't think Beijing will be too happy. It will just derail any reset of trade relations. Many Western economies today, they are touting the transition towards green energy. And Freeland herself has made it very clear. And Canadians also understand that the global economy is in the midst of a green transition. It's the biggest transition since the Industrial Revolution. Our government believes we need to help Canadians with the green transition. We need to help Canadian companies like our auto manufacturers, and we need to help Canadian families like those families in Atlantic Canada. So blocking Chinese EVs doesn't really make much sense. Doesn't electric vehicles help with the global transition? And there's a very big disconnect here that Canada has to reconcile. Is the green economy or geopolitics more important? Because I don't think you can have both today, not at this point in time. But one country has seen the light, and I can't believe I'm saying this. It's the UK. The UK under Starmer has made quite an astute decision to save the British economy. They have decided not to impose tough tariffs on Chinese EV imports. The UK is not going to follow the EU's playbook of 38% import taxes. And this is a very big deviation from the norm. The UK is perhaps the biggest ally to Washington. And this 180 turn tells us London is truly frightened of what Trump could mean for US-UK trade. Looking at the numbers, the Brits could conceivably impose tariffs on Chinese EVs and the damage to their auto industries would be rather contained. The UK exported around 700,000 cars last year, around 80% of production. And this included models from Nissan, Jaguar and Mini. And if you're wondering, Mini is no longer British-owned, it's under BM, which is a German brand today. Of these exports, only 7% went to China. The majority, or around 60%, goes to the EU common market. So if China does decide to retaliate on British exports, the damage wouldn't be very severe. And if that's the case, why doesn't the UK join the rest of the G7 and punish EV exports? Why not slap BYD or NEO with a tariff of 20% or maybe even 30%? It's because the Brits want to grow their industries and to do that, they kind of need China. The British auto industry is actually growing. There seems to be a resurgence or renaissance of production in the UK. According to the stats, new car manufacturing is up by 17% in 2023. Domestic consumption grew by 13.7% and exports flew up by nearly 18%. In addition to this, the UK is committing £24 billion of investment into the industry, and that's a lot of money. So as gloomy as the weather is in London, the auto industry might just be a bright spot in the economy. The UK opening up their auto industry to China only means one thing, more choices for consumers. British people get access to cheap EVs, and they will help to bring costs down. And I guess this is the benefit of Brexit. You can make your own decisions independent outside of von der Leyen. This comment in the Financial Times echoes what we've been saying for the longest time. If the Chinese taxpayers want to subsidize cars for British consumers, let them go right ahead. The sector is consolidating and Chinese firms are in a dogfight. There's no need for the UK to pursue a trade war that it has no stake in, which is a perfectly reasonable comment. Use China's manufacturing struggle to your advantage. Bring in cheap EVs and make the green transition even cheaper. Let China's problems be to your benefit. While the UK manufactures a ton of cars, very few are British-controlled brands. Most of the cars are Japanese, American or German. 
the UK is more or less a manufacturing hub for the G7. These are the top British built models for export. We have Nissan, Range Rovers, Minis and Toyotas. All these are foreign owned brands built in the UK. Those with British connections like McLaren, Bentley and Rolls Royce, they are all on the luxury list. They are very different from your standard commercial cars. And this means welcoming Chinese EVs won't really crater any British brand. It will most definitely eat the market share of Japanese and German automakers, but the British consumer will benefit the most. By 2030, 80% of new cars sold in the UK will be zero emission. And by 2035, this number will increase to 100%. Sooner or later, all the cars in Great Britain will be EVs. And guess who are the global leaders here? Chinese brands like BYD. You can't really escape this fact. To achieve their mandates, the UK needs Chinese EVs in the country. Slapping a tariff on them is very counterproductive and it will derail the entire green project. There are big financial implications to this as well. Sunak might be out but Starmer is still sticking to the zero emissions mandate. Companies like Stellantis are threatening to leave. Because of the EV sales targets, they could face up to £15,000 penalty per car for non-compliance. So we could have a situation where existing automakers in the UK leave, making way for new Chinese brands. It's not impossible for BYD to set up a British factory down the line. At the end of the day, the Chinese are all about business. Setting up a factory in the UK is simply a math equation to them. Is the cost of production low enough? And can I make my margins here? And there's a good chance Chinese brands might. There are good reasons why Cherry might build a factory in the UK by 2030. They are already in the British rental market, so demand in the UK is proven. And with the green mandate, this will only continue to grow. Building cars in the UK also allows cheaper access to the common market. That's a very big advantage. There are zero tariffs or quotas on trade between the UK and the EU. So EVs made in the British factory in the UK could dodge the EU tariffs. It's the same loophole BYD is using in Turkey. You make cars in countries that have free trade agreements with the EU. That way, the tariffs aren't really a problem. And if Europe decides to tariff British goods, this will cause a big economic and diplomatic firestorm. And that's why trade wars and tariffs just don't work. And the UK is beginning to realize this. You will just regress your industries and cause high inflation for your consumers. You might as well work with China. Take their investments, take their money, and learn from their technology. And over time, you can re-industrialize your economy to compete against the world and even against China in the future. But let me know what you think. Will Canada reset relations with China? And will the UK welcome factories from Chinese brands? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.